Hey, you guys, I wanted to go ahead and uh, kind of give you a quick little preface to the video that you're about to see um, because there's a lot more history to it than what meets the eye. And I mentioned a couple times that it's a real treat for me, which it definitely was. Um, many, many years ago, before I could even drive, I actually used to uh, race BMX. And I remember riding my bike through my old neighborhood and I would see this uh, bay window bus, this this late model bay window bus, kind of peeking out of a garage. And I remember it since I was, you know, a young teen. And I never saw the owner, but I would always see this bus as I rode by. I'd see it from time to time. And the years would go by and I would drive through the old neighborhood as I got older and then I moved out of the old neighborhood. And, uh, but I would always, you know, think about this car and I was wondering if it was there and I hadn't seen it for years. And then probably about a year or two before COVID, I drove by one day and I was actually driving by in a bus and I saw the man that I think was the owner of the bus. And I thought, oh my God, he's outside. So I pulled over, introduced myself and explained how I used to live across the way and uh, that I used to see this bus. And this gentleman at the time, I think he was about 83 years old. Anyway, he said to me, I still have that bus. Would you like to see it? And I thought, you got to be kidding me. And for me, this bus was special because growing up in Guatemala, my uncle had a bus very similar to it uh, in color, especially. And we used to go to the parks on Sunday uh, with the whole family. And, you know, it had a lot of sentimental, um, you know, memories for me. And so anyway, so he shows me this bus and I couldn't believe it. This bus is so nice, so original and in great condition. And as, you know, time would go by and COVID would come, uh, this gentleman and I kept in touch and I told him, I said, listen, if you ever want to get rid of it, please put me first in line. I would love to have it. So yes, I'm first in line. But anyway, um, aside from that, it was kind of cool that he and I became, uh, we became friends and, uh, time would go by. And I asked him, uh, shortly after I started my channel, I said, Hey, I would love to, in, you know, do an interview on you and on the bus. And he said, yeah, you know, I'm, a, I'm kind of a quiet guy. I don't really have too much to say. And so, you know, sure, maybe I would. Anyway, we went back and forth a couple of times. And then one day I, uh, had reached out to him and, you know, said, Hey, you know, let's, let's go for a ride in this thing sometime and he said well unfortunately i broke my ankle and he said so i actually would like you to come by but i'd like you to at least start the bus up since he would drive it maybe once a week so time went by and uh poor guy he was in a wheelchair for oh, a little bit of a uh, time and uh he finally healed up and <clears throat> excuse me after healing up he uh he said hey so you know let's go for that ride and let's do the interview and i thought okay cool so this is what you're going to see. But one of the things that I wanted to go ahead and share with you was that he had told me to contact him on a particular day. And I did. And I reached out. And lo and behold, I could not get a hold of him. And he didn't pick up. And we're talking, you know, a single guy, uh, no family. And I met a couple of his neighbors while he was uh, with this broken ankle. And so I started getting worried that I wasn't hearing back from him. And then a week went by and I thought, okay, this is weird. And I would drive by the house and I saw his motorcycle still out there and everything still seemed okay. But anyway, finally, uh, I got in contact with him, but it scared me that maybe something had happened. And so the point in telling you this is the fact that, you know, if, if you ever know someone or, you know, have always wanted to talk to somebody and uh, get to hear their story, do it. Do it while you can. Because I was frightened that something had happened to my buddy Roger and that I would never have the opportunity to go ahead and speak with him uh, and share his story. So uh, I was very excited to go ahead and do it. And as soon as I got a hold of him, I said, hey, let's do it tomorrow. Um, you know, maybe we could do lunch. So he was, he was happy to go ahead and do it. And I hope you guys enjoy it. It's not the most in-depth interview, uh, but it was uh, pretty cool to hear his story. Roger now is uh, 87 years old and this guy is now driving the bus more so because of the accident that he had on his motorcycle, but he drives it, you know, like no, nobody's business. It's super cool. So cruise along for the ride, enjoy his stories. And um, that's it, you guys. Just thought I'd let you know.
Thanks again for watching. I, I seriously appreciate it. And thank you for listening to me banter on about this. And I uh, hope you guys have a nice weekend. Right now we're enjoying the hundreds over here in SoCal, which is uh, not so fun. Anyway, take care, you guys. Thanks again. I gotta tell you, Roger, this is a treat for me. I, I mean, seriously, this it's it's almost surreal for me just because of the fact that I grew up right across the street. And to think that I used to ride my bike right across from this little house here, and I would see your bus every once in a while just kind of hanging out, you know, in the garage by itself. And then to think that a couple of years back, I actually had the opportunity to go ahead and meet up with you and chat about it. And you said to me, I still have that bus. Do you want to see it? I couldn't believe it. And now I'm taking a ride here with you. And I mean, this, this got to be like 35 plus years later that I'm doing this. So this is awesome. I, I cannot thank you enough. What was the year that you uh, first saw it? Oh my gosh, you know, I mean, considering that I was riding my BMX bike, so I wasn't driving yet, I'm going to guess it was probably around 1984. I'm guessing, I don't know. Well, or maybe the late 80s. Could, I don't know. I'm trying to remember. I moved to here uh, in 86. Okay, okay. So there we go. And did you have it then? Yes. Oh, wait, you're the original owner, right? Yes. 1978. Volkswagen bus. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Then the mystery is solved. It was the, the late 80s. So, I mean, this this is so cool. And I mean, you, you definitely drive this thing like you've had it your whole life. What made you get it? Let's see. Uh, I was planning to do some camping and... Uh, then right after I bought it, I bought a motorcycle and I uh, went camping and uh, touring on the motorcycle and that's why I only have about, what, 82,000 miles on it in 40, what, 46 years? Oh my gosh. But about 700,000 on uh, motorcycles. How many? Probably. Uh, oh my gosh. Since 1954, when I first bought a motorcycle. Oh my so goodness, about 700, Roger. 700,000. That's, that's incredible. That is incredible. So, Roger, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? 87. 87, okay. Now, was this your first Volkswagen? No, I had a bug, 1966 bug. Oh, really? Yes. Hey, wait a minute. What color was it? Red. You had a red 66. Oh, how cool is that? That is awesome. And now what happened to that car? Let's see. Uh, I sold it. Oh, I had some repairs due on it. Uh-huh. And I didn't want to pay the bill, so I... Uh, traded the Volkswagen for the repair bill. No way. Oh my gosh. Right. How often do you take the car out? A lot more now since I crashed the uh, motorcycle. Oh, wait. so and, wait, and, what? I broke my ankle. Oh my gosh. Wait, Roger, you're 87 years old and you were still riding your motorcycle? <laughs> I love it. Well, that's 
Now, if I remember correctly, that was a pretty big sized motorcycle. What was it again? Yeah, it's a BMW K1200S. Oh my gosh. So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, amazement isn't usually the reaction uh, I get. Uh -huh. I tell people it's usually absolute crazy. Oh, you know what? That's a okay. You're my kind of guy. That's awesome. So, I mean, you've been riding motorcycles and obviously for a long time. Yeah, since 1954. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. First, first bike was an Aerial Supporter 4, which is a thousand cc's, about the biggest bike you can get then. That wasn't a Harley. Wow. Four cylinders. I don't if you ever heard of the No. Uh -uh, I haven't. And I mean a thousand? That's huge. Four cylinder uh arranged in a square pattern. Okay. Two crankshafts that are geared together. Wow, that's kinda unique. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. And so how long did you have that one for? Um I was away at school. I had it for a couple of years, and uh, my parents strongly suggested that it, I ship it down here and they'd sell it for me. Oh my gosh, wow. I used to, I stripped it down, I used to take it hill climbing, uh -huh. flipped it over once or twice. Oh my gosh. And. Uh, yeah, they just thought that uh, I would be better to use my time and their money <laughs> in uh, other endeavors. I guess so. That is something. Well, I'll tell you what. I would love it if we could find a little spot somewhere we could pull over. Maybe we can uh, take a walk around the bus and uh, you could show it to us a little more. Sure. Awesome. All right, you guys, this is a treat more for me than for everybody else. But you guys, I am here with Roger Russell. Roger, good morning. Good morning. Hey, it's really, really good to see you here. And, you know, I thought it would be so much fun to go ahead and share your story and especially of the bus behind you here. And I mean, it's it's impressive the condition that it's in because it's it's all original, right? Yes. Yes, it, it is. Let's see. Uh, oh, I replaced the front shocks many years ago, unfortunately. Uh huh. I didn't keep the stock ones. Oh, really? Okay. But uh, they're Pep Boy stocks. So. Uh, okay, all right. So that's 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 the only uh, changes that have been made. Really? That's it? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're kidding me. Now, when, when you're talking about, you know, that's the only change that you made, how many miles are on this bus? Just shy of 82,000. 82,000. And what year is this bus? 78. Okay. And you're the original owner? Yes, sir. So where did you purchase it from? At uh, Old Cotton Motors. Uh, oh, okay. Over in uh, Buena Park or someplace. Okay, cotton, yes. <laughs> That is something else. And uh, going back to, uh, you know, you had mentioned before you bought it because you wanted to go ahead and go camping in it? Yes. Okay. So I got a question for you. Why didn't you do a camper bus with a pop top? I couldn't afford it. Really? Okay. Do you remember how much they were back then? This cost new $6,500. And I think it was about another 500 or so for the for the camper. For the camper, wow. Maybe a little bit more. Than that. Okay, okay, wow, all right. And so, uh, did you did you camp in this? No, no? Uh, I never did. <laughs> I never did. That is awesome. And I mean, it's, it's so funny, I mean, just thinking about the fact that you've had this for so long and just so such little miles. What did you use it for? Yeah, I uh, general transportation, and then uh, I had a a uh, small wholesale plant business. Okay, and I would deliver the plants in that. Uh, wow, 
How cool is that? Now, is that why you chose green or? No, <laughs> no, it, green because it was there. It was there. <laughs> That's awesome. Was, in, was there any other color that you thought uh, this would be good to get? Oh, back then, uh, a popular one was kind of a brownish okay one yeah that's right yeah in 78 they did have that uh the the brown yeah the, yep i remember that color and uh they wanted more money for the brown you're kidding me so uh, i took the green that's pretty funny that is funny i like the green better personally yeah. oh how cool is that so you know it's it's always interesting when when i hear about people having these cars for so long uh, what what's your favorite part of it? What's your favorite part of the car, and what's your favorite part about driving it around? Well, the uh, it's comfortable, and uh, one nice or part I enjoy is people always ask me about it. Oh, really? You know, that's cool. It's funny uh, when I bought it. Nobody asked, nobody cared. Everybody had a Volkswagen. Okay. Yeah. And then as the years come on, more people ask. You oh know? my gosh. And the amazing thing is kids, high school kids, they're amazed by it and they wave and all that. Oh, know? that's so cool. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. That is neat. So as the time is going on, people, uh, yeah, people like it even more. Popular. I never had a car that went up in value. <laughs> So that, that was a lucky stroke. Isn't that the truth? No. I tell you, this is super cool. Well, let me take a quick walk around it. I mean, it's uh, it's impressive, and fortunately, knock on wood, no accidents, right? The I was rear-ended at a stoplight. No. One time, and uh, so they replaced the I guess the rear rear section. Uh huh. And the bumper, and luckily they didn't hit the uh, engine. Okay. So that's why the paint looks a little bit newer. Oh, yeah, yeah it's a little bit newer, but a little, they, little they, shinier. They did a but good. But they did a really good job. They did a good job. Yeah, uh, they blended that in nicely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now this, I'll tell you, if you hadn't have told me, I don't think I would have ever figured that out, Roger. Yeah. I love this color combination. It's such a such a neat, neat, neat color. And super, super cool. Now you'd mentioned to me that uh not too long ago you had a you had a little mishap on your motorcycle. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> I was making a, a very slow right turn and it just uh my balance went off. Oh no! And uh, started to put a foot down, and the road kind of sloped away, so I couldn't save it. And I tried to jump off in time, but uh, my foot got trapped under the bike. Oh and no! So uh, <laughs> it was a miserable experience. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's the, horrible. The uh, other wrecks I've had on the on bikes. Have been on racetracks. Oh wow! Really? But uh, no, uh, one was on a uh, on a uh, on a road trip. A group of us used used to go out to uh, Death Valley uh -huh. right around this year, this time of year, uh, Labor Day. Uh huh. And uh, the guy with uh, his uh, wife on the back were ahead of me, and he wasn't too skilled. He missed a turn. Oh no! Went straight. Oh no! And I made the turn, and uh, on a bike, if you uh, look, that's where you're gonna head up, uh, end up going. Uh huh. So I was looking to the right, and he went off to the left, lost control. His wife started screaming. Oh no! And uh, they jammed the front wheel into the armco barrier. Oh wow! And it went straight. Mike went straight across, <sighs> and I didn't never saw it, but I uh, hit it once, 
and then I hit it twice. Oh my Must gosh. have been the rear wheel. Wow. And went fl flying through the air. Wow. And stupidly, I put my hand down to oh. brace myself. Uh huh. And uh, fractured the wrist. Oh my gosh. So that laid me down. That ruined my golf career right there. <laughs> <laughs> many years. Oh, I tell you. So, yeah. Ah, well, I'm glad you're okay. So that, that's impressive. How long you've been riding, and then obviously, you know, the the mishaps that you've had. And but hey, you're uh, you're like my dad used to say, you're like a Timex watch, huh? Yeah, just kind of takes a lick and it keeps on ticking, huh? Ticking, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 awesome. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're okay. And, uh, you know, seeing you drive this, it's just so cool watching you drive this bus and just seeing, you know, how it's just so natural, you know, I mean, for, for the fact that you've had it for so long, it's, it's super, super cool. I, I dig it. This is neat. So now have you ever had, what's your most memorable experience that you could think of in this bus? Uh, well, Unfortunately, memorable when I uh, got rear-ended. Okay, yeah, I guess that yeah, that is yeah. true. <laughs> but, uh, but nothing, nothing exceptional. No. Okay, I was just curious. Now, engine-wise, uh, still the stock engine. The uh, I did a top-end overhaul. Okay. About. 80,000 miles. Oh, wow. Okay. The, uh, I thought of rings and valves. Uh-huh. And uh, did it at Snow's Garage. Do you know where? Yeah, over in Orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah down by the plaza. He was, <laughs> and uh, they uh, pulled the uh, pistons down. Uh-huh. And uh, they checked the rod bearing. Uh-huh. And the plane bearings, there was a little scorching there, oh. so they replaced them. Okay. And then they pulled the heads off, and uh -huh. there was a crack uh. between the exhaust valve and uh, the spark plug hole. Ah. And you couldn't get in and weld it, mm -hmm. so we put new heads on it. Okay. And with the new valves. All right. And the new rings. Uh huh. And so. Uh, and uh, I put a new clutch in okay. later than that. Did a new brake job. Uh huh. Uh, turned the drums, new shoes. Oh wow! And uh, replaced the uh, brake fluid. Front nice brakes. I think they were all right. Uh huh. Pads. They were newer. So so that's really about it. I like it. Can uh, can we take a peek at the engine real quick? Sure. So we can show it off here. That is pretty clean. <laughs> oh, it's so cool seeing an all stock engine, huh? Yeah. Place the uh, coil. Uh huh. Look at that. And would this this would be a two liter, right? Yes. Okay. Very cool. It's always fun seeing all of the original stickers on it and everything else. Very cool. Oh, I like it. That is neat. And so headliner, everything else is all original. Can we open up the back real quick? Yeah. I always found it interesting that in the later years, the uh, all the the locks they were black instead of the chrome. What was it? Uh, look at this. Ah, okay. So there's the bracket that you were talking about regarding making it a, a fold down, huh? Yes. Okay. Actually, it pulls out and up. Okay. So it's even with this. That would be a nice large size bed, huh? Yeah. Look at that. Look at this headliner. Oh my gosh. It's an awesome shape. <laughs> and you you mentioned uh, to me before the middle seat, you took it out. Yes. And where's that middle seat? In my closet. I love it in your closet. 40, 40 years. 40 years. That is awesome. That is awesome. Very cool. 
This is great. Oh, this is you awesome. You can see the remains of yes. the curtains that deteriorated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's pretty neat. Hey, at least if you wanted to go ahead and reproduce them, you could probably at least use that as a sample to go ahead and find uh, find the material and redo them, huh? Yeah. You know, it's incredible for the amount of time that you've had it. Just, I mean, obviously you've taken great care of it and just how nice and original it still is. I think that's fantastic. So well done, Roger. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. If uh, if you want to take me for a ride, I'll take you to lunch. All right. All right. Sounds like a deal. This is pretty wild, Roger. Never did I think that I would actually be recording me driving the car and you in the passenger seat. Yeah, this is this is one of these moments that's just a little bit surreal for me. Cool, you guys.